This podcast will fail mostly because nobody's going to listen to it, but you might prove me wrong. Who knows? Episode 45. Yeah, 45. And this podcast will fail. Uh, Hi there. I'm just some guy. Uh, Who I am and where I am is completely irrelevant to the conversations that I come here to have with you and with myself. And it's a brand new week. How are you? How was your weekend? Uh, I am recording this on a Monday. And uh, the world changed drastically uh, in my neck of the United States this past week. Um, Absorbing all of that, all of the... Uh, things that are now set in motion um, and it kind of plays uh, into the theme for season three here so to quickly recap uh, this season I am asking you a question and I want to hear from you Uh, if you look down just a little bit into the description of this podcast you will see there is a link to leave me a voicemail I want to hear from you I want you to tell me your story so every week i'm asking a different question and uh, hoping that uh, i can get some folks to reply back and and uh answer my question and tell me their story so this week i got a new question for you the question is what do you want and again it's a very open-ended question It leaves open to you to interpret uh, what it is I'm asking for because there there really is no rule here. It's however you want to answer. It doesn't matter if it's a person. Who do you want? (laughs) A place. Where do you want? A thing. What do you want? Uh, A concept. A feeling. um, A situation. What do you want in life? And, uh, And I'd love to hear your story. So again, scroll down a little bit. Hit that link and uh, send me a message. I'll include your voice here in this podcast so it's not just listening to me all the time. (laughs) And um, yeah, this week I'm going to also answer the question myself uh, to try and spur some discussion. Um, So if you uh, will indulge me, I will spend a little bit of time this afternoon telling you what I want and what I want oh it's almost like uh, existential this this first response there's some specific things I want and I've certainly talked about them enough times uh, in the course of this podcast especially in season one but in season two as well Um, I'm gonna kick off this week by saying that what I want is for things to be okay and that could feel like a bit of a tall order right now. There's, uh, there's a lot of things that are not okay. A lot of people that are not okay. And, um, you know, the world is, uh, the world is erupting, uh, with the results of, uh, the election in the United States here. And it's not clear it's not clear that everything's okay, right? Um, it doesn't matter what side of the political divide you're on. Um, there's a good chance that you may look at things, whether you're really happy with the outcome of the election or you're really not happy with the outcome of the election. There's still, still a lot of things to be concerned about. I just want everybody to be okay. And... I've spent a good chunk of this weekend worrying really, really like deep, hardcore worrying, um, more specifically about what is happening with COVID-19, uh, my part of the world where I am here in, uh, in these great United States of America, there's some, there's some surging in positive cases and there's some surging in deaths and I feel like I feel surrounded um I I really do I really feel 
there, there, there's times when I, I can't help but get lost in a moment of feeling like the proverbial walls of coronavirus infection are closing in around me. I, um, I celebrated a wedding anniversary last week with my wife, 26 years. I talked about that last week. And we, uh, you know, we keep it simple after, after a quarter century, it's not a big extravagant thing. There's not like, you know, expensive gifts and, and spa days. And certainly there's nowhere to go. Uh, it's not some big, you know, honeymoon redo that that's available to us here. It's, it's just a, in our case, it's a nice dinner, yeah, you know, leave the kids at home, go out just the two of us and spend some time. Well, we met up after work because our anniversary was on Thursday and uh, decided on a particular restaurant we got, we wanted to go to. We haven't, we haven't been to this restaurant in a while. It's one of our favorites. And, and we even got down to the point of like pre-planning and looking at the menu online and deciding, okay, we know what we're going to order because, because you don't want to, here's the thing. You don't want to be sitting in a restaurant for an extended period of time. If you're smart and at least that's, that's the way I feel right now. And, you're seeing restaurants all around the greater area where I live um, <clears throat> being notified of positive cases and dozens of people at a time having to quarantine themselves because they may have been infected by a staff member or a party that came in to the restaurant. Ooh, so we thought, okay, you know, no, no we'll, we'll be good. We'll be good. It's a Thursday night. Nobody's going to be around. We'll be fine. I want everybody to be fine. And we get to the restaurant and the parking lot is jammed full of people. Absolutely stuffed to the gills with cars and trucks and very damn near a line of people out the door. Not on your life. Uh, not happening. We both agreed immediately. That's nuts. We are not walking into that Petri dish. <laughs> so we decided to go down the road a little bit. There's a, this is, this is one of those big retail areas that a lot of suburban centers have where there's just malls everywhere, strip malls everywhere and just shopping in a whole retail district. And, and obviously that means there's restaurants all over the place. So, so we couldn't go there. We were like, okay, what about this one? And we, we go around a corner and go to another little area. <sighs> Just wall to wall people everywhere. It's insane. Go down the road further. There's nothing unless we wanted freaking like fast food. And I, <laughs> I, I wanted a little more than fast food for our, for our wedding anniversary. Um, and so my wife is, is Googling the whole time restaurants near me and looking at who's got a wait time and, and trying to figure out options. And she says, oh, 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 this place over here. And it's one of the one of the older, you know, one, one of the first big steakhouses. And it's not as good anymore. It's not as popular. It's kind of fallen out of fashion and it's got no wait. Oh, OK. All right. That's cool. I think I think we can do that. That's fine. If it says there's no wait now, still a little still just a little bit iffy. Um, there were nowhere near as many cars and, and walking in, there were just plenty of open space or, you know, it didn't look like there were a hell of a lot of people in there. I still think that frankly, we were sitting a little too close to another group of people, but they left, uh, within about five minutes or less of us of being seated. So it, it was nice. We had a nice dinner, you know, we just kind of enjoyed our company with each other and yeah, it was, it was good. It was good, but you know, it was it was in the back of my head and, and, and just every restaurant around there was just so stuffed with people. And I, and I remember riding down the road and going, it's Thursday. What the hell is everybody doing out on a Thursday night jamming into, uh, restaurants when there are COVID spikes everywhere? What am I doing <laughs> going into a restaurant? So that was nerve wracking. And I got to be honest with you, I spent, uh, I spent entirely too much time this weekend thinking about it. And, and I did finally say something to my wife. Uh, I think it was Saturday and she's like, no, I, I hear you. And I kind of agree. And, and you know, she, she summed it up perfectly. I think that's probably the last time that we walk in and sit down into any restaurant 
this year that 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 I believe is going to be it for dine in um period end of end of that make things worse I've got my uh two of my older sons are about two hours away from us in college um they are dorming together so it's the two of them buddy system and they just had an outbreak on their campus and that's frustrating as hell um 11 people two of them reside in dorms uh thankfully those two people do not reside in my son's dorm building but i find myself reaching out to the boys and saying hey look um i i just need you to be extra careful I want everybody to be okay. And if we have any shot at a Thanksgiving together as a family and you guys coming home, we got to double up whatever level of caution that that we're working on now. And like, it sucks. Like they have to take a, they have to, they have to go grocery shop once a week, right? They've got a school meal program, but it doesn't really take care of everything they need. And, um, one of my sons is is a strict vegan for many reasons uh you know not just personal choice so he needs to be able to go to a grocery store which is about 10 15 miles away and the only way for them to get there is by bus and and i'm like god jesus guys you know i don't i don't know how we're going to do this because i really don't think you should be on a bus for plus an hour uh in in a tin can full of covid (laughs) you know and 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 it's 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 maddening because the older one the one who's now uh 22 um he very nearly died of mono uh this year and that was scary and i can't i can't even process the idea of of him getting uh COVID-19 so you know and 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 he agreed and and he said yeah no no, I I don't think a bus is a good idea right now either and I said just his girlfriend lives down there uh near them her family's very conscientious and 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 all that so you know she's got a car and and I'm, I'm sure that she'll be able to ferry them once a week uh to uh to the grocery store but even then i was like guys you just just when you're in the building just keep moving don't linger please be extra cautious with your masks please be be vigilant be aware move quick get in get what you need get the hell out don't congregate near people and you know they're smart boys and they they reassured me via, via, via text that no 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 we get it we're not you know, we're not, we're not stupid. We're not going to play games with this. So who I just, I'm look, I I've seen plenty of people talk about, Oh, you're scared. You're scared. I'm not going to live scared. Okay. Some of you are now dead. That took that attitude. Some of you have tragically lost loved ones after you said, Oh, you're not going to live scared. Well, it's not all about being scared. It's about facing a reality that there's a greater chance of death right now than the normal uh, percentage possibility curve that exists in the universe. Yes. I could walk out my front door and get hit by a car today. I could get sideswiped on the uh, highway and go off a bridge abutment tomorrow. Uh, A disgruntled employee could storm into my building and shoot the place up and, uh, and, and shoot me dead. Those things could all happen. But if you look at the percentage possibility curve on those... Right now, there happens to be a virus spreading around that is considerably more likely uh, 10 million cases in the United States uh, and creeping damn near a quarter of a million people 
dead from this virus. So, yeah, I just want everyone to be okay. That's that's what I want. I, I just got back from grocery shopping and, uh, you know, I, I I moved quick. I went as fast as I could. No lingering, no, no screwing around. I, I had my older daughter with me and she likes to go grocery shop with me. She's homeschooled. So this is kind of like, you know, <laughs> her home ec versus, uh, I don't know, whatever elective uh, you could think of that would, you know, economics, I guess, home economics. Um, just move quick. Let's go. Keep it moving, right? Don't dawdle. Don't dilly-dally. We could stop for lunch, but we're going through the drive through on this one. Yep, we are not walking into that building, and we're going to sit and uh, eat our Burger King in a parking lot. With the windows up. <laughs> um, it's almost exhausting to um, worry that everyone won't be okay. And I don't know that I... Whew, I don't know. My wife has to go off to work. I have to go off to work. Uh, my boys have to exist out there on their own. I just... My friends, I've, I've now... Jesus, I had, I've had several employees that have had to go quarantine themselves because they came into contact with someone, and thank God nobody's tested positive yet. They've all had to go through testing and quarantining. I have um, one employee who's very, very special to me. He was uh, one of the first employees I had in the company I work for now, um, and he was he was just like one of my favorite people in the world and he still is and and he's very important to me and he is currently in a hospital bed um suffering through covid-19 and it looks like um looks like he's he's probably going to be okay i haven't really stopped to look today to see if he's posted anything or said anything um but that's scary you know I want everyone to be okay. That's really what it comes down to. I feel like in some ways I've almost been too lucky, <laughs> too lucky in this regard. Um, and I mean, it's like, I don't even want to say it out loud. Like I'm a huge believer in, uh, in karma, right? That's, that's kind of the basis of my belief structure is that, you know, when you say something stupid, uh, like I've been lucky so far that the universe, um, has a habit of, of popping up and going, Oh, sorry, wasn't paying attention. Click. And then things change and not necessarily for the better. Um, yeah, yeah. I want to be careful of what I say. I don't want to jinx it, but I, I just want, I just want everybody to be okay. I want my family to be okay and my friends. And I just want to be able to move on and be well and uh, okay yeah Whew. Well, I was getting off my chest wasn't it are you still with me are you still listening uh if you are um thank you for listening to me uh go through this and um I really would love to hear from you um please click the link below uh, leave me a voicemail tell me what you want um or uh give me your thoughts and your comments on my situation and I would love to include your voice uh, in tomorrow's uh, podcast. Whew. Um, if you took a couple of minutes to listen to this with me today, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I, I appreciate your time. And I hope that you um, find these conversations engaging and um, interesting in some regard. But uh if you're one of the ones that keeps coming back every day, perhaps I'm getting something right. So um, you have my gratitude. You have my thanks. And uh, I hope I hear from you this week. And uh, let me know via voicemail um, what it is you want. But uh, that's it. That's it. I'm done. We're going to stop for today and move on to tomorrow. Again, thank you so much uh, for taking a couple of minutes out of your day. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll uh, answer this question again. What do you want? Until then, wherever you are, thanks so much and have a good one.